Yo, so I hear from my models and clients every now and then that uh, a lot of photographers don't really know how to make sure our melanated brothers and sisters look the way they're supposed to. So I'm going to walk you through my workflow on how to get the right skin tones for your clients. Hope this is helpful. First things first, uh, frequency separation is my favorite tool when it comes to editing photos in Photoshop. If you don't have a frequency separation action, which is basically a macro, it does a number of steps for you, uh, you need one. And I can I have a video, I'll link it below, I'll show you how to get an action. First things first, I'm just gonna clean up the skin, right? You can see like the color is a little inconsistent in certain places here uh, on the face. And we basically wanna clean that up. I mean, she was just in the water, I'm gonna keep that water the way it is. But I've got it set up so it automatically goes to my colors layer. My mixer brush is already picked up and I'm gonna use about a flow of about 19. You can see the other settings there as well. And I just start painting away, right? I want, we want the colors to be clean, right? And I'll be honest, whenever I'm doing my frequency separation, I hardly ever use the actual texture layer because if you, if you do this right, you want the texture to be retained, right? We use, we use the colors, that you think about this for a second, right? If you have blemishes in the skin or if you have a pimple, the only reason you can see that pimple is because there's light on one side and there's shadow on the other side. And that's it. So if you correct the color, right? If the color, if you can't see the color, if it doesn't stand out as much, then it, it, the, the blemish disappears, right? If you turn the lights off, you can't see anything. If you even the light out, you shouldn't be able to see the blemish. So I'm gonna start here, knock some of this stuff out. I like the way that looks. Let me check, yep. Now let's go up here. There are a few, uh, uh, an actual few things that I'm, I am gonna use my healing brush on when it comes to texture, but I'll show you all that here in just a little bit. But let's just clean the skin up and get it nice and neat. Another pro tip, um, using makeup artists when you're doing shoots, um, whether it's for your clients, whether it's for your models, is hands down one of the most beneficial things you can do. It will cut down on the time it takes to edit your photos and your photos will look, I mean like 30% better than what they would have looked like if you did not use a makeup artist. A lot of times when I'm doing these shoots with models here, um, I've recently started requiring makeup artists, but sometimes it's just impossible based on our schedules. Um, but I highly, highly recommend using a makeup artist. It, it will change the game tremendously. Let me see. Let me take a second to back up. And just so you guys know, so I shot this, uh, this photo shoot was done with natural light. Um, initially I was intending to use off-camera flash, but um, I forgot my flash unit, which happens from time to time when you're bringing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I, did a, I did a video on this actual shoot, so you guys, if you wanna see the behind the scenes, uh, I'll link the video to that one as well. But um, sometimes when you're, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of my shoots I'll do alone, and so, uh, you know, you've got to bring your camera. You got to make sure everything has batteries, spare batteries, SD cards for each camera. You know, I'm, I'm for this one, I was using a GoPro, using all kinds of stuff. And then I left one of the most pivotal pieces at home. It's crazy. I got there and I was thinking, wow, okay. Um, all right, let's just shoot without it. I, I don't shoot natural light as often in the last, you know, two, three years. I've really just been shooting with off-camera flash, especially outside, unless I'm in the studio. And uh, I was thinking to myself, like, yeah, this would be a good time to uh, kind of stretch my, you know, get back to it. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. See this blemish right here? No, see, and normally, you know, back in the day, I would have like used my texture tool there. But you really don't have to. Like a lot of these blemishes that you can see, they're just, it's just color, right? It's just shadows. It's, it's, it's all, all existence is just shadows. Okay, did I, was that too deep? That was deep, okay. There are a few things I'm gonna clean up with my texture tool. So I've got, I've gotten to my texture layer. I got my patch tool by hitting J. 
and then I'm gonna clean up a few of these little spots. Actually, no, hold on, hold on a second. Let me go back to my colors. I'm gonna use the healing brush tool with, with the colors layer. And nothing's happening. Yeah, so definitely a texture thing. Let me, let me clean up some of these textures. There we go. And then I'm gonna just brush that in. All right, that looks good. Now I could go in and spend a lot more time on this, but you guys get the gist, right? Frequency separation to clean up the skin. Now it's making sure the colors and everything look the way they're supposed to look. This is, I'm, I'm not necessarily satisfied with this. Let's do a few things, right? Um, I purposely left it relatively flat in Lightroom when I brought it into Photoshop because I want to be able to do whatever I want with it, right? So I'm going to merge these two together. Now I'm going to select my subject. So let me hit select, I'm going to select subject. And I want only the subject of the image to be selected here. Great, now you can see I've got my subject selected and everything else is not selected. Let's make a new layer and it's just my subject. And this is where I'm gonna start adding some color into the image without affecting the rest of the image. So first thing I'm gonna do is add a gradient map. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click gradient map. And then I'm gonna choose which gradient I actually want. So let me select here. I'm gonna scroll down to legacy gradients and then I'm gonna click photographic toning. Once I'm there, you can select whatever color you want to, to reflect the color that you want the photo to look. This is typically the color that I end up using, sepia antique. And we can change the amount of opacity later if we want, but just add a little bit of that color. I'm gonna change this specific um, layer to soft light. And then let me right click here and we're gonna create a clipping mask. And we want this to clip directly to this layer, right? Perfect. Now we've got soft light selected. We've got that. I'm, I may turn the opacity down just a little bit. Yeah, to add that color. And then I'm gonna determine where I want that color to actually be within my image. So I'm gonna double tap on this layer, the gradient map layer. And then we can decide we're in the blending options now. Right, and so let's go in here and take a look. This blend if allows you to change where the image, this particular layer is applied. So if you pull it out of the highlights, you'll see the highlights become back to the normal color. If you pull it out of the shadows, all the shadows become normal and you can put it wherever you want. And so I'm, I want the colors to be primarily in the, uh, in the mid-tones and the highlights. So I'm gonna pull it out of the shadows, I'm gonna blend it out of the shadows just a little bit. And I'm trying to see how much of the highlights I want it in. I may not want to, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pull this out. So you can hold Alt to separate this out. So if I just pulled it, you'll see there's just artifact, it doesn't look good. Hold Alt and you can pull on one side and it blends in to where you want it. Um, I'd say about there is good. Let's take a look. Yeah, I love that. That looks beautiful. Great, so um, that looks like the way I want it. Actually, I may just change the opacity just a little bit. Yeah, we want it to look natural. Now I want the lighting to be a little brighter here too. So let's go into my curves layer, uh, or create. A, we're gonna create a layer and we're gonna go to curves. And I'm gonna pull up right between the highlights and mid-tones here. Yeah, I wanna brighten her up just a little bit. I think that looks good. I may bring that down just a little bit. A really, really slight, I guess you can call it an S-curve. I don't know what that is. Um, and then I'm gonna create a clipping mask here too. So I want that to only apply to my subject, right? So, got that. And now you can see the subject is lit and colored exactly how she should be. It's beautiful, it's perfect. 
Uh, all right, guys, um, that's pretty much it. You can do that pretty quickly. And I don't doubt you can probably create some actions around your gradient map and curves layer if you want to get that similar look through it for all your photos. But um, yeah, that's how you do it. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.